Hello YouTube, SolMCA here, and more than any tutorial video, more than any funny video, more than any training video, YouTube tells me what you like best is when I do product reviews. So today, we are here doing a product review, and today, we are going to do a review of the Ernie Ball Fret Wraps. All right, Ernie Ball Fret Wraps. Not sure if you can even see that. If not, I'll make sure it's in the thumbnail. Now, what is a fret wrap? Uh, fret wrap is, back in the day, people used to use scrunchies and put them on the ends of their guitars or basses to do pretty much the same thing that this small little device does here. Uh, basically, what Ernie Ball claims that it does, and let me read it to you straight from what they have as their description. It kills overtones open string vibration and noise, all right? These little things go for $16.99 retail, $16.99. Now, is it worth it? Is it gonna cut down on how sloppy your technique is? Is it gonna make you sound any better? Well, today we're gonna get into it. Uh, this is actually the second time I'm recording this video and I'm actually glad that I'm redoing it. The first one did not come out as I desired. Uh, and it worked out great because my bass recently had to get set up. Uh, some frets needed to get um, filed down and there are brand new strings on it. So all of those things are going to lend itself perfectly to testing out whether or not this little device works because these are brand new strings. And if you know, when you get new strings, you get that twang in them. So it's overtone central right now. Uh, at least until some of that initial coding can get worn down. So what we're going to do in today's video is I'm going to test those three things or try to test those three things as much as I can. String vibration, uh, overtones, and um, whatever the last thing was, and noise. All right, so here's what we're going to do. Uh, well, first, let me just talk real quickly about what we, why we're here. I was asked to play, and let me take the fret, yep, fret wrappers off. I was asked... Uh, probably uh, over a month ago to play this tune right here, which I have not played in like three years. Sounds a little something like this. You may know it. And if you've been following me, uh, particularly if you're following me on I IG, and if you're not, you should, uh, you can see below to figure out how you can follow me on IG. You would see that up until recently, I have not been in bass shape, right? Not been in bass shape, and I haven't been playing the bass as often as I should, and as a result of that, let me fix my mic here. As a result of that, I've been really um, not clean on my instrument, things aren't as tight as they used to be, etc. cetera. So uh, I needed to get up to shape quickly, so I, try to look for a cheat code. So I've never really believed in these fret wraps. I had a student of mine that used to use them all the time and I was like, just learn proper technique. But because I hadn't played in so long and this song is moving so much and I wanted to cut down on a lot of that that you just heard, I decided to go with one of these. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to play the bass uh, and give you several samples with the bass without the fret, the fret wrap, with the bass with the fret wrap, in passive with the bass um, and the fret wrap in active. Uh, and hopefully we can, you can tell the difference. My opinion has changed now since my bass has been set up correctly. Uh, and just for way of this video, just know that you are hearing the audio directly from the back of my amplifier or directly out of my amplifier. My, what is this? This is a, a TC Electronics um, BQ500 thrust is what you're hearing the sound out of. So if you're hearing a little sizzling right now, that is coming straight out of the back of my amp. So I'm gonna give you a couple samples. Um, I'm gonna play them back to back or I'll edit them so that they're played back to back so you can hear the difference and then you can make your judgment as to whether or not you wanna put $17 into this thing. All right, so let's begin.
All right, so that was the open string test. I'm now going to play that same song, and if you don't recognize that song, it is Ty Tribbett's uh, African Medley. I did do a tutorial on the song. If you're curious about it and you want to learn how to play it, um, I will tag it in here in the video above. So let's jump into that first without the fret rap. <laughs> So those were the samples with the fret wrap in passive, with the fret wrap, without the fret wrap inactive. Now I apologize, uh, it is very difficult, especially since I'm actually hearing the sound straight from the amplifier. I'm, I'm doing my best not to auto correct as I'm hearing it, uh, but the difference in feeling of the strings with this on, it does make the strings um, a little more taut, if you will, as well as I'm hearing the m mistakes or the errors or the changes in tone um, straight out of the amp and I'm, I keep fixing things and then I'm trying to just go back and play it consistently the same way every time. So you may hear a little bit of that as well. But that'll give you an idea of, of the different samples of sounds and you can make your judgment as to whether this helps. Now let me give two more tests just to check out real quick. So harmonics. All right, and let me point out here too that my, in my active, the bass is boost, boosted just a little uh, so we can get a little bit more of an idea of how you would sound in active rather than trying to keep everything flat uh, or at 12 o'clock. All right, so one of the other things you may want to experiment around with with this fret wrapper or fret wrap is where you place it. So I'm going to move it down a little bit to within the third fret. Uh, and let's see. You already hearing you getting like a palm mute almost. I'm not doing anything different with this hand here. And like no almost no decay whatsoever from the strings. So that is good to know. You might be able to couple that with some some good left hand muting. Add some right hand mute into that, or just right hand muting. 
Add both. And you might have yourself a little sound there. You know, it, it could help in that. Just a straight up power to, uh... Forgive me, my head is still in drums. I said paradiddle. Uh, a pentatonic scale. No decay, but clean as a whistle. Clean as a whistle. All right, and that's down at the third fret. So let me put it back up to the nut. Play that same line again. You hear all those overtones? All right, um, let me do it with the active. Okay, and then without completely. Right now I'm inactive. Um, turn the active off. So I'm hearing a lot of overtones I wasn't hearing before. So let me throw this back on real quick. Play it one more time in passive. Still hearing them. Make this tighter. Put it a little further down. So you still hear that overtone when I'm when I'm coming off of that G string, and then you're hearing the rumble on my E string afterwards, but it is cutting it down significantly. So hopefully that helps you in making your decision uh, as to whether or not you want to purchase one of these. Good technique still is a great thing, will definitely get you far. Uh, but as far as recording in a studio, right now you're getting the direct audio out of the back of my amp. And that's what the engineer is going to hear. That's what the recording is going to hear. Now, obviously, there's all kinds of things you can do to edit the sound um, to get rid of some of those things. But if we're just talking about cleanly and you want to get rid of some of those artifacts, this may be the way to go for you. I'm Soul MCA. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you learned something, you got something, and you're able to make a decision as to whether or not you want to buy a $17 fret wrap. You all have a good one. Take care. God bless.